first, we need to put the right number in for x, right? That's what the evaluator thinks. So we need to plug something in for x. So put in 4 minus 5 minus 4 minus 2. Plug it. All right, so we have this order of operations. Why do we have an order of operations? Yeah? It's to save on ink and uh, time. Exactly. And money. And money. All that ink money. Uh, yeah. We, if we didn't have an order of operations, if we did want to be sure that every single person would come up with the exact same result of some string of operations uh, and numbers, we would need to use what? Make sure that all the things got done in the exactly the right order? Yeah. Uh, parentheses. Parentheses. Around, a pair of parentheses around every pair of numbers. That's what we would need. Okay? And that is very tiring. So we do away with it. Right? Uh, we say instead of drawing all those parentheses, let's just agree on an order that will do operations. And that way, if everybody agrees to it, then we can write things down into fewer parentheses. So if we look at this expression, what's the first thing that we're going to do per that agreement? Two times three. Anybody disagree? No. Can you do the division first? Okay. Uh, did you say could you? Or can you? Can you do the division first? Well, okay. <laughs> so I, I guess I was picking on one word that I thought you might have said. If you said uh, should you, well then yes, because of the agreement you should, but not because it's the right thing to do. Or, you know, math uh, makes it so. You know, it's not just a, a truth that, that falls from the sky. It's just we agreed to do it first. And, and what we agreed to do uh, the other day, I've done my research. This is how I learned it. And, and it, I find that if you give people a, you know, just a random expression, ask them to find the result, most people do it this way. Very few people uh, do it the other way. Okay? So we got parentheses first. Of course, parentheses are first. Why would you do it? You know, just take something out of the parentheses before it's done being computed. That's silly. So uh, then exponents, we're the exponents. Then multiplication and division, you know, on the same level, on the same level, from left to right. Not multiplication before division always, but multiplication and division from left to right. That's what we read. So the first thing you see from multiplication and division is a division on the leftist point here, okay? So we have first negative 4 divided by 2. Then negative 2, then we have the times 3. And negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, so we have 4, oh, sorry, 5, that's a hard one, minus 6, negative 1. So, yes, divide and multiply, give the same preference uh, to divide and multiply. Just whichever one comes first, meaning most to the left. And it does make a big difference. If we did do the 2 times the 3, three we'd get negative 4 divided by 6. We'd have negative 2 thirds, right? It, it is something different. So we do have to agree on something. We could agree to do the multiplication first, but we didn't. We agreed to do something else, right? So uh, left to right. Let's do this next one. Uh, particularly when you're trying to plug something in that's negative for x. This is my, my high, high recommendation here. Before you even try to plug in negative 2, let's just kind of prepare the expression for plugging in something in, all right? Especially with negatives. So the way I prepare it, if I want to be sure that I'm not going to make any mistakes, every x is replaced by blank parentheses. Nothing there. It's just an empty hole. And actually, that is exactly what x is. It's an empty hole. It's just a placeholder uh, waiting for a number to come along. And x will step out of that position, and the number will take its exact position. Okay. So we leave that blank. We leave that blank. And if I put those parentheses there, then especially with negatives, I'm very likely to capture it the way that it's supposed to be as the author intended it. Uh, so now I put that whole thing in for x. Now with the parentheses there, I'm sure that I am doing to the number what I was doing to x, right? 
Because what does x squared mean? x times x. x times x. What is x in this case? Negative, negative two. two. So what is x times x? It is negative two times negative two, because that is what is replacing x. Right? So I'm supposed to take x and multiply it by x. Negative two being x, multiply that by itself. And then we got minus negative two. All right, so we got five. Uh, here we have exponents, right? That would be your first uh, point of order. So we're adding positive four now. Negative two times negative two is positive four. Minus a negative two, that'll be plus two. All right, so we get 11. Nine times 11. going to buy some gas. Does that mean he's going to have more money or less money when he's done with that? Less. Less, less right? That's something to think about. Write an algebraic expression representing how much money he will have left. He's going to start with 50. $50. You, you could have a dollar sign there or not. It doesn't really matter all that much. Okay. And his, his total amount of money is going to reduce. That would be in algebra what we call subtraction. We're going to subtract the amount of money that we spend on gas. It could be X, it could be G, it could be P for petroleum, it could be anything that you want. But 50 minus some unknown value. When we know uh, how much money he spent on gas, we'll plug that in and we'll know how much he has left. That time. Um, are these out of five? They're out of five. We're doing the scale here. We'll always do this. Every problem will be out of five. And we'll do our best to kind of put a number of value to the amount of knowledge displayed. Oh, wait, so like, if they tried it, yeah, you get one free? If they, no, if they tried it, but it makes absolutely no sense in the context of the problem, that'd be still zero. Okay. If they tried it and they used some numbers and they kind of make sense, one. Two would be, uh, you can tell that they've been paying attention in class. It looks kind of like it should look. Three, it's kind of like a little more so. It's mostly there, but they've got some central state, adding fractions was part of it, and they didn't get a common denominator, right? That gives you like three, maybe four is just some little number crunching mistakes, and negative here and there as well. Oh. To start with, you remember guys the video that I showed you about road operations? Yes. Metaphysics. You watched Metaphysics? Or? I just saw oh. like, the internet before. The internet. The, the web. Yeah. <laughs> the inner web. It's pretty popular. We're gone to have a weird part of YouTube. What is it, Metaphysics? There's a really weird <laughs> part of YouTube. See, we're kind of breaking off and losing focus. I'm serious. It's all right. It's all right. OK. So part of that was he talked about the distributed property. And that's what we're going to talk about. Have you guys seen the distributed property before? Yes. yes. OK. But I want to show you why the distributed property works. Okay. Why is it that, uh, let's see, this 5 distributes to the 4 and to the 3? Why is it that I can write it as 3 times 5 plus 4 times 5? And maybe you have some kind of an intuitive notion, and that is fantastic. I want to give you another one. Or maybe you've already seen this, and I'm going to show you again. But let me show you right now. Um, a nice little picture of the distributed property. And he alludes to it as well. He, he did a video for the FOIL, right? F-O-I-L, multiplying things together. Yes. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I will do it for an easier case. And you'll find that I'm not a big fan of things like FOIL. These, these uh, abbreviations, acronyms, cutesy things. Um, we don't need those things. We can just understand that for a lot of that stuff. Okay, I was looking through your book and there's one page that has this big box and it says rules for a, like the sign of the answer for addition and multiplication. It breaks down 
you know, for addition, the, the result is positive if the larger number is, the absolute value of the larger number is positive, like, come on, 5 plus negative 3 is positive 2. I don't need rules to tell me that. I can just like, think of a, a number. So this thing will help us see that as well. So that, you know the plus sign one? The plus sign one? Yeah. I don't know. Sure will quick. I like it? Or I will think it be? Like it. I think you'll like it. I don't like math tricks. I like things that emphasize the understanding Can of mathematics. Yeah, yeah. Can I show you real quick? Sorry about the one with the negative and the parenthesis and the negative and then it makes a plus sign. Yeah, can I show you? Yeah, no, 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 I won't like that. I won't like that at all. I won't like it. No, you will, trust me. No, I see it. It's a trick. It will. You know what you're saying. I'm going to be grateful. No, no, no. No. That, those things that are just coincidences, like it's nice if, if I understand Hayden correctly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a plus sign. You know, <laughs> fine. Like, but that has nothing to do with the math behind why a negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, just like, I mean, this this could be funny, but I had a I had a, a college professor tell me one time that he was talking to a student of his, and uh, I think she, she was from the south, and there's a lot of southern style wisdom. Uh, <laughs> she said that. Uh, her math teacher taught her about negatives and positives and multiplication and said, uh, like, positives are like good people and negatives are like bad people. And positive, when a, when a, oh, and, and positive things and, and negative things. So when a positive times a positive, when a good thing happens to a good person, is that to good? So you get a positive times positive, positive. When a good thing, no, when a bad thing, okay, negative times positive, when a bad thing happens to a good person, that's bad, so you get a negative. <laughs> When, uh, oh yeah, I've heard this before. Someone's question. When a uh, karma good thing happens to a bad person, that's bad. And when a bad thing happens to a bad person, that's good. Okay, now it doesn't have anything to do with mathematics behind why all of that happens. Okay. You got me the nine trick, don't you? Huh? The nine trick. Oh, yes. um, that does have to do with the mathematics. Yes, yeah. I've heard about the nine. You should learn. You should think about why is that true. And I look. If you guys want to remember things like with rhymes, I'm not going to stop you from doing it. When I talk about it up here, I'm going to talk about it in the mathematical sense. Okay, I'm not going to make the crux of my my educating you uh, weakened by uh, not telling you what's behind it. Not telling you. What's behind it. I don't have anything against people, like how they memorize things, that's fine. But I'm gonna always try and just give you the full truth of it. Right? That's, so, and I'm not judging it, but I'm not gonna teach people this because it has nothing to do with why a negative times a negative is positive. I do this when I'm writing things out and I get a negative and a negative, I do that because it's just convenient. But yeah, it is just a trick. And uh, that doesn't make it So, Anyway, sorry to get us down that rabbit trail. Um, I'm going to show you how we can display this distributor property, uh, and it's absolutely 100% mathematically sound. It's not just a trick, okay? The thing we have to do first, though, is to establish that we can draw a picture of multiplication. Okay, so here's going to be a picture of multiplication. Let's take um, three times four. Okay, three times four. I'm going to show you a picture of 3 times 4. Now, this can be shown a lot, of things, a lot of ways. I can draw three puppies in four different rooms, and we can count them up, and we get 12, and all different things. But to show the distributor property, I'm just going to use a simple shape called a rectangle to show you uh, multiplication. Okay? On one side, I'm going to make, I'll make it 4, since 4 is on the right here. Four. And this will be 3. I'll try to make it to scale as much as I can. That's about like three. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. This side's three, this side's four. How can I show you what three times four is? What about this rectangle shows us what three times four is? Side lengths, numbers, and we have some other attribute of rectangles that shows us multiplication. Um, I take this three times this four. What does it tell me about the rectangle? That it's three foot by four foot, so it's like 
Yes, 12 squares, right? That's what we call area. That's the area of the rectangle. Exactly. So, um, you know, and this can show us three groups of four as well. Like along here, we have four squares, uh, four by one, and then we have three groups of those four, right? One, two, three groups of four, there's 12. Completely mathematical sound, no tricks, no magic. That was cool. <laughs> so now I'm gonna use the multiple, you know, using a rectangle to show you multiplication, I'm gonna show you why the distributive property would have to do what it does. It would have to distribute the five across the four and the three. Okay, so I'm gonna show this multiplication of this number and this number. I'll show you why it distributes. So this side will be five. Now what this side has to be, this, this length side, has to be, uh, let's go from here to there, 4 plus 3. Now that is 7, of course it's 7. Okay, but we'll just do it so that it is 4 and also plus 3 more. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4. That part is the 4. Okay, here comes plus 3. Just draw 3 more, right? I had 4 apples, and I'm going to show you 4 plus 3 apples. I would just draw 3 more apples. So three more feet, three more inches, three more whatever that unit might be. <laughs> that part is three. So this whole side is four plus three for seven. Okay, but we're gonna keep it as four plus three to see the distributive property. So it goes along like this. So I'm gonna go here like that. And this side's fine. So just like before, let's look at the area of the rectangle, but we'll realize that it shows us that the distributive property is the way that it needs to be. So if we look at the area of the whole thing, we could do seven times five, or we could look at it in two different pieces. The result being, really, two rectangles, right? This rectangle here, this rectangle right there, the area of the thing. So what's the area of this one right here? This rectangle, 20, right? Five on this side, four on this side, uh, four times five, 20. And what's the area of this rectangle? 15. 15, this is still five, this is still three. This area is still three times five. Looking for the area of the rectangle, we know the area of this spot, this this part of it, and we know the area of this part of it. How do we find the total area? Add them together. Here is the area of one part plus the area of the other part. It's equal to 15, that's 20, 35. So a, a visualization of how the distributive property works. And this can work also. We don't normally distribute across the numbers, right? We just add numbers together. It's 7 times 5 is 35. There's, there's really no point to do it that way. But I can use that to show you something like 3 times x plus 4. Because what happens a lot is people will do this. They just get 3x plus 4. That's not right. I'm trying to multiply it by the sum of these two numbers. So each of these guys guys has to get multiplied by 3. So you should get 3x plus 12. I'm going to use that rectangle to show you why. All right, so here's three. Um, is it okay if I switch these and make it 4 plus x instead of x plus 4? Sure. Okay, so uh, let's draw the four then as well. One, two, three, four. So here's the first part of the rectangle. There's more rectangle to be had over here. But here's the tricky part. Uh, we have to use our imaginations. That's the tricky part about it. Because if I do three times four plus x, which is the same as x plus four. Well, like clearly the first part of the rectangle is three by four, three times four. That's the area of the first part. The thing that we have to use our imagination on is when I draw x, how do I draw a length of x? How big is x? Big. Huh? Big. Big? Could it be small? Yes. <laughs> Could x be a million? Yes. Yeah. Could x be 0.3? Yes. Yeah, it, range, it could be anything. We don't know how big it is, okay? So if I draw it this big, it looks like 4, right? If I draw it this big, it looks like 5. If I draw it this big, it looks like six. The thing we have to use our imagination on is 
the length that I draw here for x is just representative of some unknown length. Okay? Can we imagine that? Even though it looks like I could measure it, I could get up this guy right here and put it down however many times it's needed to measure it. It looks like I could do that. We have to imagine that x is not a set length, it's not something that we're going to measure or figure out what x is. This length is just going to represent some number that we don't know. Okay? So, here we have 4, this is 3 of course, and this is x. The thing about x is, you could draw it as long, as short, as I want. Okay? Oh, that is really tricky. It could be this long, it could be this long, I could, if the, the board were big enough, I could just stretch it out into the parking lot, it could be that long. Go down? Yeah, yeah, could you like slide it down? No, the problem with that, I can't do that. <laughs> Mathematically, I mean, yes, in the software of the computer I can do that, but uh, <laughs> this side needs to be three, right? This side needs to be three, so I can't do that. But X can, we don't know what it is. Slide it down into the software. I can't do that. Oh, this is so tricky. would be incorrect. <laughs> okay, but still, this side is three. This side is X. If I knew what X was, how would I find the area here? Three times that number x. x. So here's our total area. Three times four, that's twelve. Plus three x. There's the distribution. There's the distribution. Now we go to do FOIL. That would be like x plus two times x minus five, something like that. I'll bring this up again, and it'll show you why FOIL. So I'm going to ask you to, you know, as we work through things that have orders of operation and variables, we're going to run into distribution. I, I would bet that most people don't have too much trouble with simple distribution, one uh, number or, or, or variable distributed through two things in the parentheses. Not a lot of mistakes made. Maybe negatives throwing you off there. But um, I want you to see why it works, not just remember how to do it. So let's, let's practice. Let's do a couple of distributions. Let's do those two. I just want you to distribute the first one. What's the, what's the result? The second one. All right, so let's uh, just distribute these real quickly. And then we'll talk about uh, where you might run into trouble. So I draw these little arcs here to remind you what's going on. <coughs> I get 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times negative 5, which is minus 10. Here, make sure that the negative comes along with the 3 as you distribute it. Negative 3 times x squared, negative 3 times x squared. Negative 3 times negative 7. And I see this quite a bit. Going from here to here. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> All right. So we've got to explain why this can't be. Because five is the first exit. Okay. I could I could write this in such a way that the negative five came first and the x came second, but that's not the issue. Yeah. It's not asking you to think. Five times x. That's when you subtract it. Okay, so get, you got to think about what this means. This means negative five times the number x. That's not what this was to begin with. This was take five away from a number x, right? Is taking five away from a number the same as multiplying by a number? No, no, it's not the same thing. But okay, so be careful. X. x minus five would mean subtract five from some number. When I tell you the number, what you'll do is subtract five, right? Here, this says when I tell you the number multiply by negative five. Two different things. Put them together like that. Um, let's see. Uh, here, let's come over to this one. Uh, 
So getting to this point, I then uh, might see the next thing would be like 9x squared. what this person might have done to get from here to there. Okay, go with Ronnie. It was me and I did negative three times two, so negative three times two. Negative three to the second, not times two. Negative three times two is yeah. negative six, yeah. yeah. So you applied the, the square power to the three, yeah. right? When, when you look at the original, the square didn't have anything to do with the three. It only was, you gotta think about what do exponents mean? They mean Multiply this number by itself, you know, however many times. Here it means multiply this number by itself twice. The number it's referring to is x, okay, not three. And when you bring this negative three in, what are you really doing? You are really taking x, multiplying it by itself, and then multiply by negative three. Okay? Just multiplying negative three by something that's being squared doesn't mean that negative three gets squared. Um, any more than four times two squared. Well, let's just multiply that four times two squared and then saying that's four times four times two times three. It's not, it's the square is four. Okay. If I wanted it to be this, I would have to flip around the entire thing. It's not, let me see. Okay. Let's do this again. So let's talk about this. Let's just um, write what's supposed to happen. Right? By what, what is supposed to happen, I mean the negative x should be distributed to everything in the parentheses. Then let's think, what would this look like? Okay. So we'll take negative x, we'll distribute it to here, we'll distribute it to there. All right. Uh, let's just write that. Negative x times x squared. I'll just go ahead and put minus because negative times positive, right? Because this is positive, this is negative, we get a negative then. Uh, negative, let's just say x times uh, 2x. Okay. Well, what does x squared mean? x times x. We got negative x times x times x. All right, well, let's talk about that. What is, we just got x times x times x. What is that? X to x, the third. Negative, x, negative, x, to the third. negative third. x to the third, right? It's just three x's multiplied together. That's what exponential multiplication is for. We're multiplying three x's together. Okay, let's look at this guy. Uh, still, it's, it's all negative. Can we write it two times x times x? Is that all right? Change the order. No? Yeah, that's fine. Is that what it is? It is. Yeah. Fine, because this is just two times x, right? That's yeah. what 2x means, it means two times x. If I multiply x times two times x, just like if I multiply two times five times seven, just make it a, a, an, an example of multiplication, so you can see it's switch the order around. Two times five times seven, five times two times seven, seven times five times two. No matter what order I put these things in, it won't make a different number, right? That's the point that we're making here. And I can leave the negative in front because negative times positive times positive is just still gonna be a negative number. I kind of recorded that that's gonna happen, negative number uh, times two times x times x. And what is x times x? What's the short way to write that? X to the second. X to the second. So we got the minus two times x times itself. get used to this, this distributive property thing. Um, let's do two. No, I already did the two. I'm going to do two. Five times three x. Let's try that again. Let's distribute this five to both of these things. 
Here we have 5 times 3x. That's 3 times x. Let's say plus 5 times negative 7. So 5 times 3 is 15. We have 15 times x. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. All right. Let's take a couple minutes. Let's try this one. x times x plus 2. Okay. Take it kind of to the next level. All right, so when we distribute this x, distribute this x, we get x times x, and that is called x squared, x times 2, 2x. Oh, I'll do it, I got that. In the bucket. Okay, so that's what you get. Nothing but you. Now, the, as I went around looking at your papers, this next topic is just coming up organically. That is like terms. What can we combine together? When we say like terms, we mean like what can we add to subtract together? Set. Yes, I'm being set. Oh, oh, experiment on that problem. Go for it. Tell me, tell me something. Both about the it. x's. Both of the x's. Because they're both an x. Let's put my. Oh, well, this guy. This guy. Yeah. Like when I, I was just saying before, uh, like the last thing I said was. When we're talking about like terms, we're talking about adding them or subtracting them. Right? Yeah. Now this x, is it being added or subtracted with x? What is it being getting times? It's getting times. So it's not a question right now if it's, if it's like terms. Okay. It's when we get down to addition and subtraction, we ask, are these like terms? Can I put them together? Can I collect like terms? Okay, right? You have Oh, okay. It's true that if I see like an x and an x and we're in an, an add and subtract situation, yeah, x and x would be like terms, just like this. Uh, x plus x would be x. x squared. What is x squared? Oh, x times x, 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 my bad, x. my bad. X plus x, what is x plus x? X, x, x two. Two. I mean two x. Yeah, two x. Two x, the sum of no. x. This is confusing, <laughs> man. This is it's a hard one. Just x. X. Huh? It's just x. Is x plus x equal to x? Let me ask you this. Is, let me replace x with a number. Is 5 plus 5 equal to 5? No. no. So we gotta know the, the, we got to know the value of each x. Yeah, you can't add it. True. So I can't come up with like x plus x is y. Because I don't know yeah. what it is. But. Yes. But. I could do 5 plus 5. What if, let me ask you this. What if I did 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5? Is there a shorter way to write this? 5, five, five times five. multiplied by 5. Yeah. 5 times, times, so 6 times 5. Yeah. So adding a bunch of times is what multiplication is. <laughs> what would x plus x be? How could I combine them together and basically write it short? x times 2. x times 2. Oh, we have a normal, like, standardized way of writing x times 2? 2x, uh, yeah? That's just the short, minimal number of pen strokes. 2 and then an x right next to it means 2 times x. So x plus x is, is 2x. This is what we, we, we mean by collecting like terms. There's an x, and we're going to add another x, and we're going to have two of those x's. Right? This would be exactly like having an apple plus another apple is two apples. When we say two gallons and two apples and we went five miles and we went, you know, something 17,000 light years away. When we say a number and then a unit, we mean, like two gallons, two times one gallon, right? Or seven miles, seven, the number seven times one mile. It's multiplication between those three. So when I say two x, I mean two x's, right? Or two times x. Uh, if if I add a bunch of x's together and the result is uh, 17x, it means somewhere over here I had a collection of 17x's that I kind of swept together into one big pile of x's and it turns out there was 17 of them. Right? I could get that by lots of different ways. Do uh, 10x plus uh, 5x plus 
x plus x. Oh, is that 17x? That's a rough that I can see. It. <laughs> but yes, they're all like terms, so they can just be added together. It just really means, like if I were to write this out long ways, it would be x plus itself 10 times, just like x to the third is x times itself through 10, plus five more x's, plus another x, plus one more x, total of 17 times x. Yes? So one x and just like the letter x is the exact same thing. Exactly. Okay. Right? All of this assumed things, like, there's always a one times an x if you just see x, and, and if I see a five, it's really understood to be over the number one, or if I see seven, I could understand it as seven to the first power. There's all these things that we don't write down that we can kind of assume are there. Okay, so there we go. I did write that to make the point that Seth made for me. One x plus x, one x and x, they're the same thing. Try. Let me ask you this. X squared plus x. Let me ask you, is it equal to x cubed? Yes or no? Yeah. If yes, justify it. If no, justify it. No. no. So who says yes, you can have an ideal x cubed? I'll oh, raise my hand just to be able to. If you feel it, raise your hand, okay? Who says no? You can't do that. I know. Who of the people saying no can justify why that doesn't go together? X cubed. Yes. Would it be 2x cubed? Then you add x and x together, and then you're cube up here. Oh, that's better. You're not cube, but the. Uh, Square? Yeah, how much? Oh, here, mom, I'm cubed. I'm cubed. Cubed? Oh, cubed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. I'm just I mean, Let's square. just back it up. The dose one. Let's just back it up. Square. Let me go with. Yes, uh, Kayla. Gosh, yes. Um, Eva. Yeah, um, <laughs> when it's cubed or squared, it means like multiplying, so uh -huh. x times x times x. And you're adding x, not multiplying uh -huh. it. So on this side, what do we have? Three x's multiplied together. On this side, do we have three x's? Say yes, we do. We have three x's. Yes, we have three x's. Yes. Now, yes. x squared means x times x. Plus x. Plus x. Will this be the same as this? No. If so, it's a coincidence. Yeah. Right? Mathematically, no. Any random number you pick is not going to give you the same thing as this. Right? Pick 5. 5 times 5, 25 plus 5, 30. 5 times 5, 25 times 5, 125. Different. So now, when it comes down to it, there is at least one number that we could plug in for x that would make this equation equal. But in general, x squared plus x does not equal x cubed in general. For every number x, no, it's not true. OK. So would it be any better to write 2x cubed? No, it wouldn't. Nope. Trying to put an x squared plus an x into an x cubed in any way, it just doesn't make any sense. Could we do it like, could we take x squared plus x and get 2x squared? Could we do that? No. Why not? We get x times x plus That should look like a 2 if it doesn't look like a 2. Yes. That, that's what yes, it can. This is correct. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Well, let's go back up to uh, this. X plus X is 2X. How come I can just write X plus X is 2X? Because it's all the same thing. They're the same thing. Yeah. Okay. What would you say? No? X and X, when you add them together, they're the same thing. And remember how we talked about if I add up a gallon and a gallon and another gallon, I have three times a gallon. Yeah? Yeah. And if I add up an X and an X, I have two times an X. I add up. 10 x's and 5 x's and 1 x and another x, I have 17 times an x. Now looking down here, do I have two of x squared? Yeah. Oh, no. no. I only have one x squared. I have one x squared. On a completely unrelated note, I have an x. They don't go together. Okay? They don't collect that way. They don't collect under addition. Just think about this. 
This is multiplication. This is x times x. And then we're adding another x. They don't combine. They do not go together. All right? They are different things. Just like, can I do 5x plus 2y equals 7xy? What? If we write it out long way, we'll see what we don't have that. We have x plus x plus x plus x plus x. That's five x's. Yeah. Now we're talking about something completely different as we move on. Plus y plus y. We don't have seven of any kind of a thing. We don't have seven x's or, or seven y's or even seven xy's. Seven xy's would look like xy plus xy plus xy plus b or x times y. We don't have any xy's over don't have any x times y. Okay. Talk about like terms here. Like terms. So these are just as different from each other as x and some other random letter that we choose. X and a. Right. X and x squared are not the same thing. In fact, imagine the distance from there to there. So imagine x is a measure of length. Now it doesn't have to be, x can be a measure of gallons, it can be a measure of, uh, of time, it can be a measure of a lot of different things. But I wanna, I wanna show you how different x and x squared are from each other visually. So if x were a length, then let's look at what x squared would look like. x squared I could represent as x times x, just like we talked about a minute ago, where I use a rectangle to show multiplication, mm -hmm. except for both sides of the rectangle are x. So it's a square. It's like adding a ruler and a piece of paper together and saying you have two of something. Yeah. Okay. Let's go another dimension. Let's go x times x times x. Here's the x times x, the square we just talked about. There's our x squared. Let's multiply by another x. How could we multiply by another x? Does that sound familiar? A shape that has a something times something times a third thing? Yes. No. So How about this? So no, box. Oh, that one. Yes. Yeah. Square. Cube. Cube. Why do you think they call it X cube? Oh. <laughs> That's X cube. cube. <laughs> right? So adding X to X squared and getting two of something is like adding a ruler and a piece of paper together. I can add pieces of paper together and have several different pieces of paper. I can add rulers together and say I have 17 rulers. But to say I have a ruler plus a piece of paper is two ruler papers. Wrong. Two, I don't know, we have nothing to call it because they don't combine that way. Ruler. And I can't add pieces of paper and boxes together, right? Two different things. They don't go together. They can interact, they can do things like that, but they cannot add together and be collected, right? If you were running a warehouse and you had rulers and pieces of paper and boxes, you would have to tell the person your inventory separately. You'd be like, okay, so we got 17 rulers. I counted them all, and there were 17 of them. There were 15 over there, and I found two more over there. There were 17 rulers. Also, I have 8,000 sheets of paper. Okay, I've had, there's 4,000 over there, 2,000 there, and there's another 2,000 in the back. I put them all together, I have 8,000 pieces of paper. But you're not gonna put the 17 rulers with the, the 8,000 pieces of paper until you have 8,017 or something. And also, I have uh, 300 boxes. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Um, we're almost done here, and I don't want to overwhelm. Well, I no. I'm going to have you go through seven on this. So before that, I mean, it's a fairly simple thing. It's, it's something we've done before, but I just want to. Recap it. It's called evaluating the algebraic expression. To evaluate an algebraic expression is just to plug something in for x. Okay, so uh, if I have 2x plus 5, and I evaluate it when x equals negative 2, we just did this on the quiz, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it just means to plug negative 2 in here. So 2 times negative 2 plus 5. Negative 4 plus 5. I misspoke. I don't want you to go through seven. I want you to go all the way through them, but the last three, I 
think is the last three. I just want you to ignore the graph part. We'll talk about the graph part next time. So what we're going to have is some distribution. We're going to have some combining like terms. We're avoiding combining not like terms. Um, and uh, evaluating expressions. The last three, though, uh, are you're going to have to evaluate it for several different values of x. It's just a table. I'm sure you've seen a table before. X, Y table is, gives you uh, like five x's to put in. So put them all in separately, and then where the y is, put what you got for y for each of those x's. Okay, it'll make a ton of sense when I pass it out. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, stop.